Let's have a go at part B. So I'll put it under here because I, I do need a bit more space. Okay, so here's, here's part B. Have a look at it. Let's, let's think about, I'll, I'll go back to the question so you can see it. It says, prove the three perpendicular bisectors um, of the sides of a triangle are concurrent. So that means that all of these lines, they all meet at the center there, right? By proving that PN dot AC is zero, okay? Now, hold up for a second. Let's just understand what's being asked here, okay? Look at the diagram again. I know I've made a mess of it, but you've got two, um, sorry, you've got three bisectors, yeah? So from P, you've gone to the, the midpoint of every single one of the sides, right? So they're all bisectors, but only two of them are known to be perpendicular. Um, you've got this perpendicular, um, or this right angle here, yeah, on the bottom, and then you've got this right angle on the right-hand side. So I don't actually know that the final bisector is a perpendicular bisector. So that, that's kind of the thing I'm trying to prove, right? Prove that the bisector is perpendicular and that therefore it actually meets, they all three of them meet at this point P, okay? So uh, we actually saw this, I mean, Sean's got an advantage here because you remember Sean on Monday, we had a look at that question where you, we were trying to prove that things were perpendicular and we use the dot product for that, right? Um, so we've got that fact, but also the question itself, it says, hey, you know, they're really trying to give you a nudge in the right direction. Use the dot product. When two vectors are orthogonal to one another or perpendicular, their dot product is zero, okay? So this is what I want to try and do. Um, what's the connection, by the way, between part A and part B? What's the connection? Because it says hence. Yeah, yeah. You found a vector from that um, point. Yeah, that's right. We, we have PN, right? Do you see that? Um, we were asked in part A to find PN, so we're going to just slot that straight into the result in part B, okay? So let's, let's go ahead and do that. So just scrolling down. So PN dot AC, what is that equal to? Well, from my previous part, right, we worked out that PN was W plus half V. Is that all right? And now what I want to do is I want to say AC. Now just go back again to the diagram. What did we say AC was equal to, right? We already had it in terms of the vectors that were given to us. What's AC? Uh, U plus B. Very good. So I'm just going to go down and put that in. That's U plus V. Fantastic. Okay. Now at this point here, um, if you're like me, you will scratch your head and say, well, now what, right? Because I've got no coordinates on any of these things, right? I can't, um, I can't actually, you know, go across my components for W and half V and add them together. Like, what's the X? What's the Y? What's the Z? Um, I can't do it on the the second vector, U plus V. I don't know where these things are, right? Um, and so you might think, well, where am I going to go with this? And Sean, we encountered this on Monday. I'm going to put you on the spot. I know you're the only one in the room, but Mrs. Arz, you were listening in. What can I do with these, these dot products? What can I actually do that will help? That's correct. You can separate them into separate dot products. Yeah, exactly right. The, um, the, the dot product is distributive, just like the normal product when we're multiplying numbers, right? Um, now, Ryan, for your benefit, I'm going to encourage you to go have a look at the recording because I actually quickly showed on screen, if you've already done it, yep, the proof for why. Uh, the dot product is distributive, but let's for now, let's just use the result. Okay, so can you guys actually just help me? Um, what are the dot products I should write? There are four of them. W dot U mm -hmm. dot W dot B plus half B dot U plus half B dot B. Very good. So I'm just writing these in um, alphabetical order, not that it matters, um, but you got, in, got them exactly right. I mean, you were just going um, first, outside, inside, last, so it's not that difficult to write out all of the vectors. So I've got four dot products here, and um, when you look at this, you're kind of like, um, is this better or is it worse, right? Like, at least the first time I looked at it, I was like, this doesn't seem obviously like an improvement, okay? Now, can I ask you guys, help me remember, what is the result I'm trying to prove? What's this, this right-hand side mess? What's it supposed to be equal to? Zero. It's supposed to be zero, okay? So somehow, I've got to get all of this to collapse into nothing, all right? The first clue I'm going to give you is, have a look at this first vector, u dot w. Where, where is u dot w? Or where, u and w, rather. Where are they on our diagram? 
Very good. Yeah, so AB and PL, which are represented by U and, U and W, they are defined as perpendicular. So their dot product is zero. That's really good, right? So I'm going to go down to here. I'm going to say that's equal to, well, that's a start, right? It's zero. That's, that's one less thing to worry about. But then if you have a look at VW, UV, and then V and V, if you look carefully on the diagram, are any of those perpendicular to each other? No, no, they're not. So you're kind of like, all right, well, what can I do with this, okay? Now, given that, remember, number one, I'm kind of going through a process of elimination in my mind for what can I do with this, okay? So the first thing we've just eliminated, you just told me, none of these perpendicular remaining, none of these remaining three dot products are perpendicular, they don't get me zero, okay? Um, in addition, I don't have coordinates, so I can't multiply anything out and find it, like evaluate it to zero, okay? Um, but I do know that V and W and U, they're on the diagram, right? So I can find, maybe I can find some other perpendicular relationships because then they, those dot products will be equal to zero. Now, have a look at this, right? Look at the three dot products remaining, okay? I know we expanded out, but if you look at them carefully, they actually all have a common factor. Did you notice what it was? Yeah, there's a V, right? V's here, V's here, uh, and <laughs> there's two V's on the end there, right? Now, I know it doesn't look obvious, like why would this be useful, okay? But watch what happens when we quote, quote unquote, take a common vector of V out. Okay, oh, not a highlighter, let's try that again. V, and then all of them are being dot products, right? So what I'm doing is I'm reversing the distributive property here, okay? So what have I got in the first instance? I've got W. W plus a half. Half U. Half yeah, half yep, half oh, and, then, and then also half V. Yeah, I could have, I could have factorized out a half um, from the U and the V as well, um, but you're, you're gonna see the reason why I, I left it there, okay? Now, look really carefully. In fact, what I have to do is I have to get my diagram here because you need to see these all at the same time. So let me see if this is gonna work. If I copy this down here, and if we can see it all together. Yes, success, all right. Um, there we go, I think that'll fit. Okay, look really carefully. W, half U, and half V. Look carefully on the diagram. Can you see where those vectors are on the diagram? Yeah. Mrs. Isles, yeah. use, some, use some letters. Help me out. Describe what you can see. Yes, 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 very good. Okay, so your ants walk around, and let's, let's have a think about where they walk, okay? So the first thing is, there's vector W, uh, right? So let's have a look here. This is, um, this is the vector that I've drawn in green, right? Can you see where I've got it there? From P to L, from P to L, okay? Then where is half U? Well, half U is down here. Do you agree? Right? So actually, it's kind of, it's half of the orange vector, right? And to finish it out, where's half V? Yeah, it's, use the letters, it's, it's from B up to M. Do you see that? It's over here on the right hand side. So it's actually half of the purple vector, right? Now to make this really clear, let's write this out. Sorry, there should be a plus sign there, right? This is now V, which in fact, where's V again, by the way? What, what side is V? It's BC, right? And now what I'm doing is I'm calculating the dot product with, uh, write them with me, there's PL first. Then there's L, B, B. and then lastly there's B, B, M. So you can just follow where the letters are going, follow the ants <laughs> is what you said. This is going to be BC dot PM. It's, it's, it's actually the last thing that I haven't drawn anything on, right? So PM is in fact this vector here. And we know that those two vectors, BC and PM, are perpendicular. So what's that equal to? Zero. Zero since BC is perpendicular to BM. And for me, when this actually emerged, and I'm just going to tell you guys, I was working on this problem probably a bit later at night than I should have been, and my brain was not quite going as quickly as I wanted to. Um, when it actually emerged, I just thought, that is 
that's brilliant that someone saw that with no, <laughs> no, no words, right? Because all of the, the logic and the reasoning are built into the vector's arithmetic, right? Um, that we have proved this, this clever little result, which by the way, remember I told you that point P in the middle of the triangle, it's got a name. It's called the circumcircle, which is a funny name. Sorry, the circumcenter rather the circumcenter, because the, the, it's the center of a circle that goes all the way around through A, B, and C. So I don't know if I can actually draw it accurately. Uh, something like that. That's really badly drawn. Sorry, everyone. Um, but if you have a think about it, it's because all of the, um, all of the sides of the triangle are chords of that circle. Um, and the perpendicular bisectors, they all meet at the center of the circle. Um, and so that's how it's the center of this circumcircle, which is why we call it the circumcenter. Okay, how's your brain feeling? Yep, that's right. Yeah. Yep, exactly right. And um, of course, you can actually prove it with, you know, those other circle property. It's fine. Um, however, you end up doing something like this. You've got to use lots of words. There's nothing wrong with, uh, with words if they're the right way to do it. But I just love that there's this other way, which I, now that I understand vectors, I find it much more, much more elegant, right? So, um, I hope, I hope, you know, now you're looking at my, um, my fairy bread of a diagram and all the colors flying everywhere. Um, you can see how helpful it is, by the way, to be able to sort of sift out what's going on by, by seeing the colors and be able to highlight from the diagram what the right symbols, what the corresponding symbols are in your working.